recap, and we'll uh, we'll try not to take too terribly long on this. Um, but we'll we'll go on and, and run through them: the Forty Nine ers, Seahawks, Rams, and the Cardinals here. First things first, uh, let's go ahead and dive into the San Francisco 49ers. Um, they needed a wide receiver, a cornerback, and a um, an offensive line help. Their win total right now is set at 10.5. Now, this is the losing Super Bowl team. Uh, typically, the losing Super Bowl team doesn't even make the playoffs the next year. Right. So, they're, they're fighting against a, a big curse, I would say. Um, and I normally believe in that too. I follow that, but I it's there's logic behind it, which is usually it's so hard to get to a Super Bowl. You've kind of went all in on a season to do that. The 49ers didn't. They were in a rebuild, and the rebuild happened about a year or two before they oh, kind of yeah. thought it was going to happen. Well, I, their their defense was so disruptive, and their running game uh, became such a like they didn't necessarily need the quarterback to be great like most teams do they just needed the quarterback to be serviceable yes and the offense and that was designed by Kyle Shanahan really showed out in spades all year last year yep. um now they only had five draft picks they had no picks in rounds two through four but let's go ahead and run had through two first though and that helped yeah had two in the first uh now they traded back up into the first but um Let's go ahead. And, they, no, they had oh, no, 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 they had to. They had to because they they traded with uh, with Indianapolis. Before, they traded forward for uh, for a first round pick for the Colts. You got it. So let's go ahead and run through those right quick. Uh, defensive lineman Javon Kinlaw from South Carolina was number one pick, number fourteen, number twenty five pick in the first round. Wide receiver Brandon Ayuk from Arizona State. In round five, they got offensive tackle Colton McKivitz out of West Virginia. They got uh, tight end. Charlie Warner out of Georgia in round six. And they got, and this is a hell of a pickup, in my opinion, wide receiver Jawan Jennings uh, at pick 217 in the seventh round out of Tennessee. Now, obviously, Jennings had some behavioral issues, I guess you could say. He was suspended for a season from the Tennessee football team. Um, When Butch Jones was there, he got readmitted and put back on the team under Jeremy Pruitt, etc. I... Talent wise, I mean it, the kid is unbelievable, and and I think that he has fixed his uh, his issues. So well, he's a late round flyer. If he hadn't, and, yeah. he, and he and he's an, an idiot again, it's you got him in the seven. It. it didn't cost you anything. This is what you should be taking instead of punters and kickers and long snappers. Yes, uh, I was a little bit surprised that they went with Ken Law at number fourteen because on the board you still had CD Lamb and you still had Jerry Judy. Uh, yeah, I, I was really wanting them to take one of those two guys. Um, I think they fell into the idea of, okay, Ken Law is really, really high on our this vertical guy's a, board. This guy is a monster. Yeah. I mean, he, so, he really is a beast. Oh, sorry, the horizontal board. Uh, he's he's unbelievable. He's He had to be really, really high on their board. And I think they fell into the trap of, hey, there are a ton of really good wide receivers in this draft, and we yep. know that we can get one at our 25th pick. As opposed so, to waiting around, like it's supposed there, to grab. There were here. reports from um, one of the guys from the NFL Network was on like the the Zoom call or whatever with. So a couple of these different programs allowed like one reporter to be on the call with them while they went through their whole draft and watch them. So one of the guys from the NFL Network was like that. I don't. God, I wish I remember the guy's name. I give him credit for it. He said that listening to Lynch and and uh, and Kyle talking that uh Brandon Akun was their number one receiver. Brandon Ayuk, really? Ayuk, yeah, Ayuk, sorry. He said that they had him ranked and graded higher than everyone else on the board. And he said that's something that you see teams say publicly after they've taken the guy. But he said, I'm telling you, when that draft pick came up, they knew they weren't taking any of those top tier guys because they didn't have them graded at that place. And they thought he's going to be there with our next pick and we'll just take him then. Let's, let's replace the defensive guy that we traded away for a rookie deal contract guy. We think can be just as good. That's a, that's a valid point. So Kim you Law, save a Kim shitload Law of be, money financially yeah. 
to replace the position you just replaced. And they don't think, you know, maybe after a year of learning the game in the NFL a little bit, they've gone backwards at all. And they still got their number one guy. I thought that was a little strange. It makes me worried because I don't think uh, Ayuk is is anywhere close to those guys. Um, and 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 I like I said I I had T Higgins above him too that went in the second behind him. Um, but it's kind of hard to argue with Kyle because he's done this for a long time. I think it, maybe he's grading based on potential. Like it, I I don't. I don't, or, or maybe it's because you know Brandon Ayuk played with Manny Wilkins, you know, for however long. Uh, right. You know exactly what kind of quarterback play was he getting, and obviously you see what can happen when you don't have a lot of competency at the quarterback position, as we talked about with Juju Smith Schuster, right? His numbers absolutely dropped. Well, yeah. maybe Brandon Ayuk is just as good as Juju Smith, and this is just talking. That's right. But maybe he is insanely good. I mean, we got to figure out how Kyle got there. But yes. I'll tell you. I want to know how he grades. Any, any other OC, head co- offensive-minded head coach, general manager does this pick, I'm really questioning them. Kyle is the Kyle and Bruce Arians are the two offensive-minded coaches that I kind of just trust if they say, we have this guy graded as this, and we think everybody else is wrong. Um, But – that was the logic behind how they got the first because I wanted them to take CD or yeah. Judy. You know that. I mean, you've had that conversation. Oh yeah. Um, and and when they took a Uke, my first thought was, uh, just disappointment. Just man, that sucks. This is this is not even close to one of the guys that I thought they I wanted to see in this offense. But 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 I could easily be wrong. I'm kind of hoping wrong. Uh, McKinnon jumped in. He said, so which is the problem here? Shanahan coaching in big games or Garoppolo's playing big games? There's obviously a shortcoming somewhere in that system. Listen, listen, listen. They, they lost in the, the Super Bowl. In Atlanta, okay? Like, he's a, you're, This is a guy that was butthurt because his Falcons had a massive comeback, and your head coach had a whole hell of a lot to do with how they ran that offense, all right? Not Kyle. Yeah. Yeah, I think I – yeah, I agree. Now, I mean, I obviously, there, there were issues time. last year. But, and losing to the Chiefs, losing to Patrick Mahomes is nothing to to hang your head about. And you just got beat, all right? You yeah. got beat by somebody who is a god at football. Yeah. I mean, he was just he was just better. That's all nothing you can do about that. He was just better. This is not a big game collapse because Aaron Rodgers came in and played a big game, and they beat their ass. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I mean, they, they got to the Super Bowl. Like at what point is that like a And they a weren't even supposed to be anywhere near the Super Bowl yet in this rebuild. Not if yet. you said two years ago that this team was gonna play in the Super Bowl in two years, but and let's say get your ass whipped. Just get beat like a drum, like don't even deserve to be there. Every 49ers fan would be like, Take it. Yeah. Take it. McKinnon, in two years it's gonna happen. Take it. McKinnon said, uh, worst night of my life on a multitude of levels talking about that Falcons. Patriots game, yeah. One of the most frustrating nights of my life. I, I can't say it was a great one. It, uh, Yeah, I can understand that from It was a great two hours, but it was a terrible five to six hours. <laughs> let's, uh, let's go ahead and jump into the Seattle Seahawks. Um, nine wins is their over-under for the season on uh, Vegas odds right now. They needed offensive line, defensive line, and edge rusher help. So basically, trenches. And with their first pick, they went with Jordan Brooks at pick number 27 out of Texas Tech. And it surprised basically everybody, <laughs> even though we, we shouldn't have been surprised. Because Pete they Carroll do this every year. Getting, Pete Carroll is getting Bill Belichick-ish. He doesn't trade out of the first. But has that guy ever drafted somebody in the first round where everybody was like, yeah, that's the uh, – who is that guy? Yeah. Who I mean, did we take? What? Huh? It's it's very strange. Uh, according to now, Pro he Football Focus, always hits on these dudes. Yeah, Pro Football Focus said uh, he was their sixty fourth ranked prospect. Um, you know, from the from a run defense perspective, ninety one point five run defense grade in twenty nineteen. Uh, he's one of the best linebackers in the class as far as that is con- uh, concerned. He's not someone who's going to play all that well in space or make plays in coverage. And I mean, you're having to deal with. Uh, 
with with uh, uh, Kittle and and guys like I mean, it, not good in coverage. The have you watched the NFL the last two to three years? Yeah, if you got, you a, got a linebacker that can't cover somebody, you can't play anymore, man. No, and I, I guess I I can understand it. Like if he's great in run coverage, well, yeah, you're playing the 49ers twice, but they've also got Kittle. So if you take well, away the run Debo and and yeah, you got all kind of stuff that. Another receiver that Kyle Shanahan seems to think is amazing. So, yeah, but I don't think you're – and then you also have to compete with the Rams and Sean McVay, who was the golden goose a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, so, it, it, I yes, if I'm in this division, I want to draft defensive guys because I have to deal with those two cats, okay? Yeah. Be clear. I like drafting defensive guys. I, once again, this is almost the same conversation with Pete as I had with Kyle on defense. And I have this with Bill all the time. I don't know who the hell our first pick is ever going to be, but I know this. I just trust that the guy might do well because he knows more than Because I of the do. system. Like, he yeah. knows more than I do, but you just named things that are flaws that I would think would take you out of being able to play at the NFL level as a linebacker, much less be taken in the first round. Uh, now, day two, they moved up to take Tennessee's Daryl Taylor, uh, an edge rusher out of Tennessee. Uh, yeah. You know, okay. Like, it, I, th- I think it was a little bit of a reach, but again, it might fit into their scheme. It might fit what they're wanting to do. He, uh, he turned it on down the stretch of the 2019 season, earned an SEC high 89.6 rushing grade from week seven through the end of the year. Uh, going forward to the NFL, Taylor projects as someone who will be a solid starter, but even though we're higher on him than most, this is pro football focus, uh, this was still a little early for him to come off the board, especially given the trade up to get him. I, he still would have been there. Like yeah. I I just I don't I can't I I don't I, like I said, I Pete confuses me, but he I look at I've kind of seen the Seahawks drafts a lot like the Patriots drafts, if you want to be like an organization. Listen, just because he's bad at drafting doesn't mean you have to be bad at drafting, okay? Yeah, no, that's true. Be like him and all the other things. Try to draft better and you can beat him. <laughs> because this is this is exactly like the, this is exactly like a Patriots draft, except he wasn't smart enough to trade out of the first. McKinnon said, uh, I mean, hasn't the Seahawks MO been all about having linebackers stop the run and make the defensive backs cover everyone? Yeah, yeah, but I think the game is changing, dude. I it's don't know completely that you can, different. That that has been the mo. Tight ends are way too athletic, and slot guys are getting matched up on linebackers now because of defensive schemes and offensive schemes. I'm yeah. just telling you that scares the shit out of me if you can't cover anymore because you're just asking for some little guy or some crazy athletic tight end to just eat you alive in the middle of the field. Oh, 100. percent the middle That's, of the field is the only place in the NFL that is still wide open all day already against good linebackers. If you put somebody who can't cover in the middle of the field, it's two offensive geniuses are going to just chew it up relentlessly. Yeah, 100%. Um, let's go ahead and run through the rest of their draft. Round three, they got interior offensive lineman Damian Lewis out of LSU. Round four, they got tight end Colby Parkinson out of Stanford who – I think could actually end up being pretty good. Uh, probably going to the, be the replacement. You get into the best player that they drafted, in my opinion. Uh, round four, they got DJ Dallas out of Miami. That's my and, guy. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I think he's going to be just fine. I think they he, have they have problems with running backs staying healthy. If if they could get a hot young guy, this is what they do every year. They draft a running back at some point in time. Yeah, and and the next year that kid is you know a top ten running back in the NFL. Yeah. I mean, they, they just keep them rotating in and out, and right. you always got fresh legs. Uh, yeah. Round five, they got edge rusher Alton Robinson out of Syracuse. They got uh, wide receiver Freddie Swain from Florida in round six. And then round seven, they took tight end out of LSU. Not who you would think. This is the frustrating pick of my life. Steven Sullivan, who... When I saw a tight end at LSU. I got ecstatic. Yeah, and, and then you see it's not who you were thinking. It not wasn't... My boy. Not my boy Thaddeus. It wasn't Moss. Um... It was Stephen Sullivan, who, you know, did play fairly well. But he's he fine. I don't know yet. Listen, for what Brian Shanahan likes to run, uh, Sullivan's probably going to be really good because yeah, he's the better blocking tight end. Yeah, I, I and he, and he's fine, and he's fine. He's not 
garbage, but there's a reason he went in the seventh round late. I yeah, mean, uh, sixth round wide receiver Freddie Swain out of Florida. Um, only had like 20-some-odd catches last year. Uh, he caught the, the Hail Mary two years ago against Tennessee. He uh, is a big body that can go up and get it. I mean, yeah. he is big, And he can fly. Way, like he's, he's, he's super fast. Way bigger than Thaddeus. Way bigger than Thaddeus. What's he? What, how, how tall is this guy? He's like 6'4", I think, if I'm not mistaken. Thaddeus is like... 6'2". The LSU program has him at 6'2". So, that, yeah. like 6' he, he, he might be like 6'1". Uh, Freddie Swain, however, let's see. He is... Uh, let's see, NFL.com is pulling up the uh, the drafting combine profile right now. Um, yeah, I mean, that, you know, we'll we'll see. I think he's a bigger guy. Uh, no, Freddie Swain's at six foot, one hundred ninety seven pounds. No, per, no, per the uh, per the combine. I don't care about Freddie. Oh, you're talking about uh, Stephen Sullivan. Um, As opposed to Thaddeus. Uh, Stephen Sullivan. Uh, he's six five. Yeah, he's he's a bigger guy. Yep. he's much bigger than Thaddeus. Six five, two forty eight. So. Blocking tight end, you know, way bigger, um, and and actually, I mean, he caught a he caught a touchdown pass against Alabama, he, you know, all kind of stuff. But no, 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 he he was not bad. But you're right; he only had twenty receptions, some twenty something receptions throughout the year. You know, he's just not not who I was thinking when I saw tight end from LSU got drafted late. In not this not who you would think would uh, would take a flyer on a draft pick. Uh, yeah, but overall, I, what we didn't do with the 49ers is whether or not we liked the uh, the Forty ers draft. It, I think you can't help but like the 49ers draft. Um, I do I do like the 49ers draft. Yeah, I mean, they yeah. only had five picks. They took flyers basically round five through seven. Uh, and the first two picks, I think we're good. So I like uh, both. Their, well, I liked one of their picks. I don't like the other, but they got a guy making the decision that knows a hell of a lot more about offense than I do. Yeah, as far as the Seahawks go, since we are on the Seahawks right now. Uh, I don't I, like any of these. I, 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 like, D, I like DJ. Yeah, I, like DJ I, I I like. Yeah. How about this? I don't like the draft, in as much as it, I nobody really knows much about these guys and whether or not they will be useful going forward because they weren't. Like, if we look back three years from now and none of these guys are any good in the NFL, are you going to be surprised? No, uh, but I will say this: I do trust the Seahawks organization to be able to make these guys into useful NFL players. I agree with that. I, no, so, not not disagreeing with so that. So I, I don't. It's not. I don't like the draft, but I don't know that I ever liked the Seahawks drafts. So, I just I just felt like your first couple of picks, you you had a chance to take far superior talent than you took. Yeah, I I agree. Just my opinion, though. I agree. Just, um, with that like said, a lot. let's uh, like Seattle running backs a whole lot. Yeah, you always do. You always do. <laughs> Let's uh let's go ahead and move into the next round, the next little thing. Um the Los Angeles Rams, their over under right now is eight and a half, according to Vegas odds. They needed offensive line help, linebacker help, and running back help. Um look, they didn't have a first round pick. They traded that away to get uh the cornerback out of Jacksonville. Um but they did have two second round picks. They had two third round picks. They had a fourth, a sixth, and three in the seventh. So you can always find a way to get draft picks if you need them. And Los Angeles definitely needed them. They did not have a lot of capital. They don't have a lot of uh, free agency cap room. So this was how they were going to be able to replenish their roster. And I. You know, let, let's how about this? I'll roll through all of them real quick, and then we'll uh, then we'll jump into it. Round two, number fifty-two pick, they got running back Cam Akers out of Florida State. Round two, number fifty-seven, they got wide receiver Van Jefferson out of Florida. Round three, eighty-fourth, they got edge rusher Terrell Lewis out of Alabama. Number one hundred four in the third round, they got safety Terrell Burgess out of Utah. Obviously, a big fan of that pick. Uh, round four, tight end Bryson Hopkins out of Purdue. Uh, round six, they got safety Jordan Fuller out of Ohio State. Round seven, they got three picks. Linebacker Clay Johnston out of Baylor. Kicker Sam Sloman out of Miami of Ohio. And offensive tackle, uh, offensive tackle, excuse me, Tremaine Ankrum out of Clemson. Um, I, okay, so let, let's grade their first round pick as Jalen Ramsey. I think that's good. I mean, I, I, if, you can, if you can trade a pick to get Jalen Ramsey, somebody that's established and whatnot, okay. You still got to pay him. Now you got to pay him. 
or he's yeah. gone. So yeah. you traded the first round pick for a guy that's going to be on your team for two years. Congratulations. Or or you got to pay him, right? Are you so, pay him, but they have no cap room. So yeah, uh, running back Cam Akers and wide receiver Van Jefferson, Florida State and Florida both in the second round. Van Jefferson, I think they reached a little bit on. I was incredibly surprised that they took him as early as they did. Uh, but they must have been super sold on him, and and who am I to judge uh, Sean McVay on offensive talent, right? Uh, Cam Akers, I was a little bit shocked that he fell all the way to 52. The kid is an absolute... He is the only reason that Florida State was able to go to a bowl game last year. He he was their offense for two years running. The kid this is, is not a knock on Cam. I like Cam a lot. I For a team that has... Very little draft capital this year, next year, and the following year, and no cap space at all to sign anybody. Running back is not a position I would be drafting. Uh, maybe I just maybe think not that early. You drafted one last year in the third round that everyone thought was going to be the heir apparent to Todd Gurley. I know you had him in, the, in your in your class for a year, the boy from Memphis, but like, is are you done with him or not? Because why are you spending draft capital on a guy? that you need other positions and you, you, you're going to have to fill this roster at some point in time. Yes. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. And you have no money and you don't really have any premium picks. Yeah. I'm not taking it, but you know how I feel about running back. No, Why I, 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 I the totally the understand. very first pick in the draft. I don't care where it falls. The fact that it was late in the second round is your fault. Yes. Uh, third round edge rusher, Terrell Lewis out of Alabama and safety Terrell Burgess out of uh, Utah, I like both of these picks. Terrell Lewis, when healthy, that's the biggest caveat here, when he's healthy, is an absolute monster on the edge. He can get to the quarterback better than anybody that was on Alabama's team over the last two seasons. Uh, he helped win. Like, he was the biggest reason they won the national championship in 2017. You know, it, it just depends on whether or not he's healthy. Now, he played all of last season. He missed almost two full seasons before that. That's where the issue comes in. Um, he's a third-round guy, I think, mainly because of injury, and you don't know whether or not you can count on him to be healthy. But if he's healthy, he's got a high motor. He can get in there. Like He, he missed one season due to a, a fluke bicep tear or whatever it was, and then the next year was like a pectoral tear. Like it, Just crazy random stuff that... You don't know whether it's going to be long-term or not. Now, obviously, he came back last year, had a monster season at Alabama. I mean, it led the team in sacks, like all this different kind of stuff. So, he, I think Terrell Lewis can be really, really good. Terrell Burgess, safety out of Utah, phenomenal pick. Uh, you know, you and I both love safeties in today's NFL defenses, right? It, it is an incredibly underappreciated position because they dictate how the defense works. If you're the Rams... You need defensive help. I mean, the the Bucks came in and hung 55 on you last year in your house. Like, you need some defensive help, especially going against the offenses in the rest of this division. I think this was a really, really good pick, and and they got some value with this one. I, I think Burgess is phenomenal. He made plays all over the field for Utah. He is great in run support. He is great in coverage. Uh, the guy is a little bit undersized, but I think he's going to be fantastic. Um, I, I like Terrell Burgess a ton. Uh, round four, Bryson Hopkins out of Purdue. Stereotypical, uh, big, you know, bulky tight end that can catch the ball if you need him to, but he can be used more as a blocker. So if you're going to try and utilize Cam Akers and Darrell Henderson's speed and athleticism, you're going to use that guy a lot. So I, I would, I like that pick. You got safety Jordan Fuller out of Ohio State. I don't think he's as good as Terrell Burgess, but still good safety out of Ohio State. And then your seventh-round flyers, all from really well-coached teams, uh, Miami of Ohio, Baylor, and Clemson, all teams that won their division, all teams that won their conference. You got linebacker Clay Johnston out of Baylor, kicker Sam Sloman, who was actually really good. Like I, I You know me. I bet on Miami of Ohio a lot last year. Not a lot, at, multiple times. So I did actually watch Miami of Ohio multiple times last year. Uh, and then offensive tackle Tremaine Ankrum out of Clemson, you know, these are all good guys to take flyers on from pick 234 through 250. Uh, I don't know that they're going to be great. I don't know that they're even going to be good. But they're seventh-round picks. Uh, I like 
what the Rams did in the draft, is especially later. I, I don't like the idea of taking a running back with your first pick early in the second round. Uh, and Van Jefferson, you know, seemed like a bit of a reach for a wide receiver late in the second round. But rounds three through seven, like, I think it was totally fine. So I, I'll, I'll say that I like what they did. I'm, I'm, I like I like Cam Akers a lot, a whole lot. I don't know that that's the the place where you want to be taking yeah. somebody right there where you have a lot of other needs, I believe, that you're going to have to fill. Uh, maybe not this year, but in the coming years. I'm, you know, okay. I, I just wasn't impressed. I can understand it. I can this, was, it. this was one of the teams that I didn't think did a good job. You don't have a lot of draft capital, and I, I didn't think they spent it well. And I think you're going to have a lot of guys coming up in free agency soon that you're either going to let go or pay out the nose for, but you, you got to hope they can stay healthy and keep producing. Yeah. I, I think this team went all in on winning the Super Bowl early. And when they didn't, I think they're going to struggle the next couple of years fielding a real competitive team with depth. The next couple of years, they've got plenty of guys signed as stars. The problem is, is they don't have anybody behind those guys. Yeah. Yeah. I, it, the depth is going to be an issue. And I think that's, that's why your flyers on those guys in the sixth, seventh rounds. Um, and that's, I mean, that's why you take them, right? You just hope to God that you can develop them enough that they are useful NFL players. Let's, uh, let's move into the next bit, and this is our last team from the NFC West, the Arizona Cardinals. Their win total is seven this season, so that is up a full game and a half from what it was last year. Yeah, it's big. Um, a, lot, a lot of people really believing in what Kyler Murray did. Obviously, they're, they got Deshaun, uh, uh, DeAndre Hopkins. Sorry. They got, uh, they got Hopkins. They've still got Larry Fitzgerald. They, uh, they still got Patrick Peterson. They, you know, this is a team that's got guys – uh, they needed offensive line help, they needed linebacker help, and they needed cornerback help. Uh, in their first round pick, they got linebacker Isaiah Simmons out of Clemson. He can play anything. They've got him listed at linebacker. He can play cornerback. He can play safety. He can play linebacker. He can play uh, edge rusher. He, I mean, the guy does everything. It's just ridiculous. Now, the question is, he can do everything, but is he great at anything? Um, at Clemson, against the competition that they went up against, he was great at everything. I don't know what that necessarily means for the NFL. Yeah, I'm really curious. That's my question mark with him. I, I think he's an, just a crazy athlete and can do so many different things, but I worry how exceptional will he be at any of them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's roll through the rest of it. Round three, tackle Josh Jones out of Houston. That was a value pick. There were people that were talking about the idea that Josh Jones could go late first round, maybe early second round. They got yep. him at pick 72 in the third round. Uh, they got, uh, let's see, Lakai Fotu out of Utah. Obviously, I'm a big-time fan of the Utah defensive line. He was a monster. Uh, Rashard Lawrence in the fourth round out of LSU, another guy that, uh, that could make an impact on the game. Linebacker Evan Weaver out of Cal in the sixth round. I thought that was also a value pick. And then round seven... They finally went running back. They got Eno Benjamin out of Arizona State. Uh, in in yesteryear, Eno Benjamin would have been a second or third round pick. In this year's draft, they got him in the seventh round at pick 222. And I think that is incredible value because Eno Benjamin was a stud for Herm Edwards in Arizona State. So, I'm, Evan I'm, Weaver. I'm great with this pick. Seventh round, this is what you should be doing. A sixth round, Evan Weaver out of Cal. Obviously, linebacker, he was fantastic under Justin Wilcox's offense, I mean, uh, defense, I, yep. I I like every pick that they made. Every single pick. I, if, if, I'm, if we are picking a winner for this division, I think the Cardinals won this NFL draft. I think this was a yeah, in this In this draft. conference, in this division, yes. Yeah, I, 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 I love I, this. I a clear winner. So I, they, they didn't tackle, you know, every single need that they had. But you um, can't. They didn't have enough picks to tackle every single need that they had. And, and that's the thing. They they had, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. They had six and one picks. of those picks, they traded for DeAndre Hopkins. And that is totally reasonable, right? That's pretty strong. Now, obviously, you needed some cornerback help. You didn't get that, but that's okay. I and how is that different by. than Jalen Ramsey? 
because Hopkins is already locked up and signed to a long-term deal. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. So, well, long-term, I think he's only got two years left, right? But that, that you still got him for two years. Like, yeah, that's he's a wide good. receiver, man. Yeah. I think it's fine. And, and a veteran and wide receiver. And they're not cap-strapped the way the Rams are. You got that right. I I love this Cardinals draft. I think that they hit, they, they got value on every single pick that they made. Uh, this, I think this was great. Like, I don't think you can ask for any more out of Cliff Kingsbury and that bunch. Um, I mean, this is this is what you want out of a second-year head coach. Like, they are building towards an identity, and I like this. I like this a lot. So, uh, I'm guessing you feel the same way? Yep. Nope, they're the winner of this one. Who's the loser? Man, I, I'm going to say the Seahawks, but I trust them too much to make them the loser, I guess. Like, I'd maybe, say the Rams. Yeah. I'll let you say the I'll, I'll say the Seahawks for now because I just it, like it seemed like every person they took was a flyer. Like I don't feel like they got value at any single pick that they made. Um, yeah, no, they didn't, and they didn't, and they didn't. So, and but I, I don't, I don't, I don't think outside of the Cam Akers pick did they get value. But I don't call that value when you need to be preparing for life without a lot of guys, yeah. and you're not doing that. Yeah, it, it almost seems like the you're Rams, taking a guy that. History says he'll be done in three years. Yeah. Uh, I mean, to be fair, like, they, they need a running back uh, to go along with. But, uh, but do they? I mean, I would, you, you think. There's right? nobody else they could have taken in the fifth round or the eighth round? No, I mean, they, they could have got like, Benjamin I mean, late. They could have got all sorts of people late. Yeah, you're right. I mean, there's running backs to be had. Your very first draft pick, you take a running back when you've got a lot of other needs. That, and, and here's the problem. I, this year, people look at this year right now. Oh, this year they don't have any of those holes. You're right. They don't have any of those holes this year. But they're going to next year and the year after and the year after. And unless you think they're poised to win the Super Bowl this year, then you don't go get a running back. Yeah. And, and I don't think they are, by the way. I don't but think they are either. Because I'm never going to believe in Jared Goff. I think we saw the best we're ever going to see from him. I think you're I think you're probably right. You're probably right. All right, uh, that is going to wrap up today's show. Obviously, we appreciate everybody that jumped in on the comments. You guys are fantastic. You help make the show run. We always appreciate you guys being in here. Uh, go and check out the rest of the clips from today's show if you missed out. We, uh, we are always thankful for you guys for doing that. Of course, share the show out. Tell your buddies about it. Make sure you are subscribed on all the different platforms, podcast apps, or the live show, Twitch, Periscope, Facebook, and YouTube. Uh, Chris, is there anything else we need to hit today? Nope, that's it. That is it. You guys have been fantastic. Thank you so much. And as always, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. We will see you again tomorrow. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at GaryWCE, or at